nothing is important in this world absolutely nothing except god and his kingdom our prayer starts with that hallowed be thy name our father in heaven thy kingdom come and thy will be done there is nothing important other than god and his kingdom god wants his plan to be done on earth his will his purposes and that's why he created man you know that he gave that plan to adam same way he gives his plan and there is a plan for every baby that is born into this world a beautiful plan of god the israelites after receiving the plan of god they were so happy they came out of egypt but the deliverance from egypt and pharaoh is for the purpose of god taking them into canaan deliverance was the beginning he said in exodus 3:15 and 16 i'm delivering you from pharaoh from egypt from this surrounding in order that i may take you into canaan a land flowing with milk and honey that is absolutely into god's richest wealthiest god's word his kingdom milk and honey is all shadow whatever here the reality is ours now but they did not believe his plan they ignored his will and plan like the israelites we got delivered from egypt from pharaoh from this world cosmos and also from satanic kingdom Colossians 1:13 delivered from the power of darkness translated into the kingdom of his dear son why many have been deceived to stay as a member in a church born again spirit filled being a good so called christian not knowing they have been delivered and have come into the kingdom in order for the plan of god to be fulfilled nothing else you are not called into the kingdom just to stay as a member god had a plan for the israelites in canaan he had a plan for all of them to become kings and priests they rejected it and when we read hebrews chapter 3 verse 16 for who having heard rebelled indeed was in not all who came out of egypt led by moses against what did they rebel against the call against the plan of god god was taking them into canaan just for 11 days journey but they rebelled against his plan Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Now this is after the rebellion. They went into the plan of the devil. That was not God's plan for for them to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. No. Absolutely not. May the Lord give you wisdom to know that is not his plan for you to just go to church and get back home. You can do that until you die. 
Verse 18 And to whom did he swear that they would not enter the rest But to those who did not obey Obey his words Obey his call into Canaan For a glorious ministry and work To be a light to the nations So we see that they could not enter because of unbelief What is the unbelief? They couldn't believe he was able to take them into Canaan They couldn't believe the plan of God Now the fourth chapter talks of God's people getting into restlessness Not any believer, any church Will have any rest When you are out of the plan of God Out of the will of God The rest of God comes When you are in the center of his will And you are flowing with it God never said that you are not going to have a fight He never said it is going to be easy And what kind of an opposition What kind of a spirit will be attacking What spirit attacked them Not allowing them to enter the call of God You are going to see Some of you are going to be God will put the finger right there Be humble So that you don't get hardened If the biting of this spirit The wounds are still there with you Is going to upset you I warn you in the head of time So be very humble God is going to expose this I told you I did not know about this For the past 24 years I have not spoken about this to no one You see The revelation is progressive As we go forward As we go on digging into it God gives more light Not just for the sake of reading the Bible So nobody can have any rest they couldn't get inside the rest because of unbelief. Who are the people who are going to have rest? Those who find the plan of God. And walking in the plan of God. God has a plan. There is a reason why you and I got delivered from the hands of the devil. It cost his life. The blood of Jesus. Now. What was this spirit that was trying to attack these people? What is this principality that really messed up their future? And messing up many believers life and future in churches right now? Hmm? Listen prayerfully. Please. You are privileged to hear it I have never heard before Psalm 74 12 Psalm 74 12 For God is my king from our fold Working salvation in the midst of the earth You divided the sea by your strength You broke the heads of the sea serpents in waters can you see that? The heads of the sea serpents But there are plenty of demonic forces You can call principalities or wicked spirits Of the sea serpents Sea usually is a type of people of the world Verse 14 you broke the heads of Leviathan in pieces. Now watch that word Leviathan. 
I want you to pray within you and also pray for me because I already sense the nudging in my spirit to deliver this message freely. Help us all Lord. Did you see it's written here you broke the heads of Leviathan. Leviathan we're going to see what this creature is. What is God speaking? What, what is this name? Leviathan. But you notice there the head is in plural. So that means it's a many headed monster. How many of you know there are some Hindu gods with many heads? Each head switches over their function. Weeping suddenly, anger, violence suddenly, compassion suddenly, silence, different heads. Many heads. Did you notice that? Has God created a creature with many heads? Can you tell me one? Come on. Many heads. There is not even one. Is God angry with the creature called Le Leviathan? What he created? First of all, he didn't create with ten heads. Secondly, is God angry with the animals? Then he must destroy the zoo. He must go into the jungle and then kill all the snakes. Is he angry? No. He's talking of satanic principalities. Can you see that? Many heads. Multiple heads. So when I told you about the Hindu God, immediately you knew about a ten head God. Goddess. Hmm? Now, and he gave him, now look at this, this is interesting. And he gave him, Leviathan, as food to the people inhabiting the wilderness. God gives this creature, this demonic thing into the hands of his people who are in the wilderness. Striving to go to the destination, the land. Levath may be food. You just munch. Chew it. Spit it out. See? Who are the people in the wilderness? People who are in transition from Egypt to the promised land. They are passing through the wilderness into the promised land. Listen, you will have your wilderness before you go to Canaan. But you can choose to wander there. Caught up in offenses and bitterness and unforgiveness and judgments and Finding fault and I am the great, I am the holy person. Like my prayer is the only prayer. I can't agree with anybody's prayer. You remain there in the wilderness. The people in the wilderness are people about to enter the promised land. They have been delivered from Egypt, but not yet possessed the promises, the destination God has for them. Leviathan is a principality spirit that opposes every child of God in reaching their destiny. It comes out so fierce. In all kinds of deceptions, you see that heads, different heads. Hmm? Different heads. It came as a monstrous, violent spirit to the early church. 
people all died they were crucified they burned tied up in posts and burned finally another head showed up <laughs> said oh well i'm shaking hands with you all <laughs> said another head how many of you are following me Leviathan is a very nasty spirit that opposes people of God from reaching their destination their goal their calling Leviathan opposes everyone and make them wonder and get into the plan of the devil and waste their life This Leviathan opposes getting their inheritance the kingdom of God moving in the plan of God flow of their anointing their gifting now psalm 104 psalm 104 verse 25 this great and wide sea in which are innumerable teeming things innumerable teeming things I believe he's talking of all the demonic things. Living things both small and great. There are the ships sail about. <laughs> There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there in the midst of the people. The sea I told you is a type of the people. We know that our faith life is as a ship crossing over to the other side to the plan of God and storms come a lot of things happen as we go deeper into the sea and deeper and deeper this spirit shows up but God gives us the victory Satan has been defeated already and God while taking us this spirit will show up for us to chew him as food listen prayerfully so as you go into the deep things God it begins to attack as you grow in the Lord it begins to attack getting the new anointing it begins to attack it resists those who go on with the plan of god deeper things of god isaiah 27 we will go through these things cut off and okay coming days god willing and then see how we can jointly be released from this amen because this is one spirit that blocks just like a border that stops all the vehicles when the train passes stops god's people from reaching their goal my lord you see 27 one in that day the lord with his severe sword great and strong can immediately somebody tell me what is the severe sword great and strong his word the sword of the spirit is the word of god will punish leviathan the fleeing serpent <laughs> You see a serpent that of fleas Leviathan that twisted serpent coil twisted and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea again i want to ask you a question is the lord angry with the snakes are you talking about demon spirit the devil is turns out to be a dragon in revelation he shows a passer snake in genesis now when god's people are crossing over from pharaoh 
the transition time before you reach you go into the destiny the spirit shows up and attacks i'm going to give you an explanation of this spirit from the bible okay now let's go over to ezekiel chapter 29 Verses 3 and 4. Speak and say, Thus says the Lord, Because I am against you, O Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, O great monster who lies in the midst of his rivers. Now this Leviathan, what is this? What kind of a creature is this? It lies in the rivers of Egypt. Egypt. What do you find normally in the rivers of Egypt? That monster creature crocodile. This monster means leviathan creature with joints. It's a monstrous creature. And we're going to study about that animal and from studying that animal you will know how this demon operates please listen prayerfully because you won't allow you to get the revelation now because that is one of his attacks like the spirit of witchcraft he won't allow you to go into so that's how many of you just you want to pray that you feel sleepy you want to study and you feel drowsy you you just want to do things for god nothing works out and you will just you want to give up this spirit is in combat against you Yes this was the spirit that stopped Israel from going there They had to just wander for 40 years and die in the wilderness Leviathan here it says Leviathan jointed monster could five times in the text of the authorized version okay in Hebrew the bible words Leviathan is foregoing exception always left untranslated in authorized version see now this where was this found in the reverse o pharaoh the king of egypt pharaoh was totally under this monster leviathan and in fact that animal was in the rivers of egypt now you tell me why pharaoh said i am not letting the people go now you understand i will not let them go plague after plague came God brought judgments Exodus 12 12 says he brought judgments upon the gods of Egypt and it caught Pharaoh so much he said no not letting them go on not letting no not let them. and let me tell you they were just simply caught up by this crocodile God is on our side he had done away with the enemy's power through the cross Hallelujah. And is defeated eternally, permanent, total. He has given us the victory, okay? And two third of the angels are on our side, waiting to punch. They are on our side, at our disposal. Two third of angels. And God wants his will and his plan to be done in our lives. not just live and die people who just live and die something comes up and it takes them over like tsunami or others they go out in the wilderness and then wait until they are seen as citizens or whatever and then they die not knowing the plan of god this one with all kinds of different heads it deceives them within they say is what god has called you and you just caught Leviathan. The Bible says, be wise as serpents and be innocent as doves. Now listen, Captain. 
in some of the rivers in sri lanka when flood comes crocodiles from the jungle they get inside the lagoon the rivers inside the town and people are very careful some people have been taken away sometimes you can see only the nostrils over the water it will just float and wait until the prey comes near once it sees the prey it hides under water the crocodile can stay 12 to 15 minutes under water it comes closer to that prey it catch off guard you don't see the enemy outside now you're going to listen something very important this creature one fourth of its body one fourth if you take this one you divide this by four parts one fourth of it is the mouth the mouth juts out it has got nearly 1100 teeth straight nail like teeth no molars it cannot munch no molars it cannot hook there are no hooks but nail like teeth 1100 of them when it bites somebody holds you tight that's all it can do it can crunch you it can grind you just hold you tight of course the teeth pierced inside the prey like nails going inside your hands and hold you tight one third of the power is in its mouth of this crocodile which is called leviathan see how god brings about a character of a demonic principality showing this animal which was in the rivers of pharaoh egypt not allowing the people of god to leave egypt and then later coming and showing up in the wilderness i tell you how we showed up this crocodile this leviathan One fourth is the mouth and one third of its power. Where is it found? In the mouth. If you are interested in getting into the destiny of God, well, you should be. You have better know this and you have better have a good fight. And God will give you the victory. He will give you the victory. Anybody you telling him, Lord help me. Help me Lord, don't let me lose your calling. Take me to the center of your will, please. Help me Lord, send someone. God will help you. Because that is his will. You not just stay in the wilderness. Today the churches are in the wilderness. Many going in routine. No destination. no way to go is finished god says i'm done go ahead i'm waiting for the next generation now i trusted you guys to take the gospel but you didn't want to believe me believe what my plan so i will go with your kids and then what happened but what happened to these people they got attacked by the spirit and they wouldn't believe the plan of god jude verse 5 says god after having delivered a people from egypt destroyed them who did not believe jude 5 shall i say something to you 
What is it that they didn't believe? The call, the plan. They didn't believe. The God who delivered me is able to take me inside. David said, the Lord shall fulfill everything that concerns me. He who has started a good work in me will also finish it. Yes, I see the giants, but God will destroy the giants. They didn't believe the plan of God. They couldn't believe the Lord can take them in. They believed in God when the God delivered them out. A God of deliverance. Now they didn't believe that God can take them inside. Many Christians believers they get caught in this. And they are going round and round and round and round. Not knowing the mandate. Just having church. Just having church by a building and then just the people there. No wonder Jesus said when I come will I find faith. The devil is turning out these churches into a real casino clubs. Terrible. Now, when this crocodile catches a person or animal or even a human being, watch carefully. It opens the mouth and catches it like that. I told you one third of the power is in the mouth, right? One third of the power is in the mouth. Many angels fell down. Now when it catches, watch it. It twists. Turns around. Like a fan inside the water. In order to confuse you. To break your bones. It twists. Turns. Have you seen it catches animals? And it. It, oh, it twists. And by the time three, four, five. Seven, you made it very fast twists you'll make. You don't know where you are. And you are bleeding and. Uh, what has happened? You don't know. You can't answer properly. You can't think properly because you are twisting. This demon spirit will come when a person is caught. Now listen carefully, prayerfully. It will confuse you so much. It will twist your words. And you will say words like, I am not into this plan. I am not going to be in this ministry. I am not coming to Sri Lanka. Leave me alone. I am not. Nothing to do with this. Nobody can talk in this way. Against your plan of God. Unless you have been caught. And twisted. This demon. When it catches. It catches and twists your word. Please humble yourself. It will twist your words. So that you will open up for demons. Confusion. Distraction. Uh, division to come in. You twist the words of the plan of God. Because you are dizzy now. Because you have made so many turns. It will twist what? Words. Psalm 56 5. Psalm 56 5. All the day they twist my words. The enemy. Sometimes the enemy also will put words in your mouth. Say that. Now look at me. Tell me. Why did they say, better if we have died, Moses? Better if we have died. Better we go to Egypt. And we don't want to go with this thing. Why do we come here? You think there are no cemetery there? There's no burial there? 
There are a lot of places there. This is what they said. They were caught up by their spirit and they were so twisted they start twisting their words. And they said it's better we die. Better we have died. It's better we have died. It's better we have died. And God said, now the poison has gone so much. You are bleeding now. You might as well go into the wilderness and fulfill your desire. And they all went in. They died. Was God there with them? Yes, he was there. That's how the churches are today. Many churches are today. God is there. Father, we need water. Okay. I'll give you. We need bread now. We, we are hungry. Oh, God is not going to make them. Oh, I'm not going to. Moses, I'm sending them into the wilderness now. But I'm not, I'm not giving bread. I'm not giving water. I'm not meeting their needs. I'm just allowing them to die. No, he didn't say that. He said, I'll give you. Because I'm a loving father. But you are getting nowhere. But where am I going, Lord? Nowhere. So for how long? Until you die. And I'm waiting for the kids to take them in. Oh, I pray that Spirit of God will grant you revelation about this. That even today that you will stop all your nonsense, your all kinds of things that you are tickled off and whatever about this present cosmos life and get very serious about what you want to do with your life. Don't wait till you are 50 and 60 and 75. What am I going to do? Ah, oh, yes. Eh? Doctor said that. Doctor said this. And you know, so what is now? Oh, yeah, I know everything. You know. I heard about the call and all the but I uh, just let it go. Twisting the words. They were caught up. Already. When the words are twisted, communication is disturbed. You twist your words and I twist my words and communication is disturbed and the relationship goes away. You said that, you know. No, no, I didn't say that. No, I said it. No, no. no. I said, no, I didn't mean that. No. There is confusion comes in communication. But you don't understand. I, I didn't mean it. No, you said it. Twisting words. Destroying communication. You remember when they were building the tower, they couldn't understand each other? <laughs> Destruction of communication. Moses couldn't get through. He come on, wait now. Why you rebel against us? They just took the stones. Caught up by this monster spirit. And they spoke twisting words. They spoke against Moses. They murmured. They complained. Hey, they were bitten by this serpent. This Leviathan. How many of you are following me until now? Please put up your hands. Please. Listen carefully. You, you, I tell you, you are the first one I am speaking to you regarding this. For 24 years I have heard pastors, or cassettes and books. I never read anyway. I never heard. It destroys relationships. Now this spirit shows up when you are about to leave your wilderness and getting into your destiny. It will rise up to fight against you. You're not going there. You're not getting into God's plan. Twisting your words. Attacking your prayer life. Attacking your Bible meditation time. I told you Leviathan. It has as many heads, right? Mm -hmm. It will show up in different, different heads. It will show up. Oh, may the Lord Holy Spirit give you wisdom to receive this. It brings twisting words, breaking relationships, bringing confusion, making you to speak negative words. Later you think, why did I say that? Why did I say that? And James tells us, 
once your tongue is caught your destination is finished the rudder is compared to the tongue when the storm came the captain of the ship holds the rudder and he directs the ship to the place where he wants it to go and see how this leviathan spirit twisted their words and caught them not allowing them to go there they said we want to die better we die and god said okay that devil knew once they speak those words god had no answer he couldn't do anything some people think god can do everything no not without your cooperation all things are possible with god god is not going to show his power without the church ephesians 3:10 is wisdom without the church no he has limited himself i will show myself my glory and my power through my children i listen it think about it so unless people or a person has been bitten by this crocodile they begin to twist their words and say wrong words and negative words and oh, no no i'm not no i'm not here i'm not in this no leave me alone okay now not only this spirit shows up when you are leaving the wilderness in going into Canaan God's plan it blocks you from the other side it attacks you from Canaan you cannot come in all this is because the beautiful plan should not come to pass in your life and mind when God is with us who can be against us it is god who delivered it is god who is guiding it is god who brought them out to die in the wilderness no take them into canaan what is canaan the plan of god for them in that place hey man see so it will try to attack through circumstances through people through words discouraging words and all kinds of things that why you should not go in speaking words of fear and discouragement now we come back to the 12 spies who went numbers chapter 13 one from each tribe and they all went so 12 tribes 12 spies out of the 12 two were Caleb and Joshua <laughs> all right now you know how really you know that well, the chapter 13 and 14 you have to meditate and then ask the lord for you so go by scripture by scripture at home okay because why i am saying this tell me first corinthians 10 says 11 these things were written for our warning do we take the warning hmm? that these things should not happen to us it can but they are written for our warning those of us who are living in the last days the ends of the ages have come is our warning i don't know some purpose or whatever you are hearing these things and god has brought you and these were you can't hear accidentally god has a purpose and plan for you a purpose for you maybe the things that the pastors cannot see maybe the things that they don't understand god will reveal it to god will unveil these truths to you that you may pray and intercede for these people i can understand how moses would have started his ministry taking the crowd through the wilderness there is a plan and purpose why you are listening to these things today 
God knows when to hear what message. The Spirit of God knows. Why? The ten spies came and said, Yes, the land was good, but we saw the giants there, and we cannot go. They got bitten by this crocodile over there, which frightened them, which was mm, hiding under the water, these spirits, and they came and attacked these ten people. Caleb and Joshua said, No, 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 no. Listen to us, please. We can go. God helping us, we can go. And they said, No, we cannot go. Then the whole congregation wept. We are going more. Ten people were bitten. Whole nation, more than six million people got the infection. She said, No, we cannot go. This spirit spoils the imaginations. It will make you imagine what that person is thinking about you and that person is not thinking about you. They said, we, in their side we were, we were grasshoppers. How did you know? Because of this demon spirit. Made their imaginations twist. It's going to be trouble. So they came with the full force, that satanic anointing, and said, no, we are not going. There are giants there. Yeah, we found some nice good fruit and all that. This uh, grapes, no, we are not going. We cannot. And how much Caleb and Joshua, they tried to tell them, no, we can go. We can. But they took stones to stone them. You know what happened? When they took the stones, watch me. God said, wait a minute. The glory of the Lord showed up. God stepped out. <laughs> he stepped out. He said, what's happening here now? He said, Moses, separate now. I'm going to kill these people. He said, Moses, how long will they not believe me? How long will they not believe my word? Believe what? Believe what? The plan which he gave at the very beginning. They didn't believe that. They didn't believe that. I did so much of miracles and signs and wonders. I brought them out of Egypt, right? But how long they will not believe me? Believe that I called you for a plan, a purpose. How many people are there not believing the call of God in their lives and just living, ah, yeah, that's okay. One day God will it'll flow with the circumstances. After all, God knows what to do with my life. Nonsense. Those are all demonic imaginations. God knows what to do with your life. You are throwing the ball back into God's hands. No, it is your choice. Moses chose. Esther chose. Paul chose to deny his life. I do not count my life dear to me. Moses said, no, I want to suffer affliction with the people of God. Esther said, if I die, I die. Why are you putting the ball on God's court? Easy. God knows. God knows. He is my creator. Deception. Deception. Total deception. Okay, let us go to uh, Numbers 14, okay? Watch the revelation that was given to Caleb. Oh, Lord. Numbers 14, verse 6. But Joshua, the son of Dan, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. 
Say, how humble they are. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel. Saying, the land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. This is after they rebelled in verse 1 and 2 in chapter 14. They have been crying the whole night. It's a good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us. A land which flows with milk and honey. Watch me. What the words they received through Moses at the very beginning. Exodus 3, 16 and 17. I am taking you into a land which flows milk and honey. It was in their heart. The call was in their heart. They did not forget. It was written in Joshua's and Caleb's heart. God has called us out of Egypt to go where? Into the land flowing with milk and honey. Are you keeping the call of God within you? Are you keeping it within you? Hmm? It's your life. It's your destiny. Who can have this plan except God? I, I tell you. Now, they continue to say, only do not rebel against the Lord. Now, few the people of the land. For they are our bread. Can you see that? They are our what? Bread. They are saying. Did he not say the Leviathan will be given as food to the people in the wilderness? So they are saying that they will be as bread. We can eat them up man. We will eat them up. God will give them as bread for us. Just munch it and eat it for your sandwich. And God says, how are we going to eat this enemy? With the power of God's word in our mouth. Just make soup out of them. Are you listening to me? As we speak the word of God and Plunge the spear, the sword into the enemy. Bread for us. But you know even though they says they wouldn't follow. They wouldn't listen. See verse 4, 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? Believe what? Believe the call of God. And now you say, you can write there Jude 5. Right there in that verse 11. Jude 5. You know why? After delivering a people from Egypt, bringing them out, he destroyed them, those who did not believe. They didn't believe that God can take them into Canaan. They get into all kinds of things. You know most of the preaching is man-centered. Money. How we can have money, prosperity, how we can have a good uh, relationship, how we can have a good marriage, how we can have a good uh, that, good this, all man-centered. There's no one who says, you've got to take up the cross and follow the Lord. Shut up! If you want, you do it, do it, otherwise just leave it. Now, when you preach such messages, what is that message? Take up the cross, deny yourself and follow me. Millions and millions of Japanese, and Chinese, Bangladesh, and India, they, they don't know that there is a thing like that. See, all these things can come near you and as long as deception is going to be around us, we won't have time and we will not, never think of reading it. That's another deception. Good will come to you, but you will not know it. Jeremiah 17, 5, 6. You will not know it. God can come to you with the message through the letter. You may not even know it. Huh. 
so this spirit shows up when we are about to leave the wilderness and get into the ordained place the invasion zone but it cannot succeed it cannot succeed it, it cannot stop you as long as you put god's word in your mouth keep on saying it put the word of god in your mouth god will fulfill all that concerns me he will fulfill it i know that he is taking me somewhere lord help me hold my hands lord help me to find your destination paul said the thing that jesus christ caught me i want to pursue that call. 